Hey guys, I'm Tyler and today we are going to make a cordless portable mortise machine. Like many of you woodworkers, I know all about the Festool Domino, but that is way out of the price range for most of us. So I sat down to try to come up with my own design to make my own portable mortise machine. But I did a little bit of Googling and found a couple sets of plans and decided not to reinvent the wheel. These plans are not mine. You can find a link to them in the description down below. It'll take you to a Russian dude's website where you can download the plans. Super easy to follow and I think it turned out great. This is a truly portable mortise machine as I am using the rigid cordless router as the power source. Also, I have a 3D printed dust chute which was made by Wes Swan over at Geek Smithing. You can find a link to his channel in the description down below. This is the first time I've used 3D printed parts. Worked out so well. Fit perfectly the first time and I think that's just super cool how two guys design two totally different things and put them together and it fit perfectly the first time. As an engineer, that gets me all tingly inside. Let's build this thing. To complete this build, you will need a roughly 30 by 30 inch, half inch sheet of plywood. I chose to use some Baltic birch because it's very stable and very, very uniform. And I cut that to a rough square on the table saw. Now I understand that not everybody has a CNC machine, and a lot of people don't even think that CNC machine is considered real woodworking, but in my opinion, if I'm down in the shop and I'm creating some sawdust and having a good time, it is absolutely woodworking. Now I have a CNC, so this is a perfect opportunity to use it. Now I do gotta say, it kinda bit me in the behind because all of the inside cuts on this particular build were a little bit small. So I spent a lot of time filing and sanding the inside cuts to be the dimensions that I needed. I had the CNC leave tabs between all the parts to hold it in place and before I broke those tabs loose I sanded a little bit to get any of the frayed plywood veneer and then I cut all the parts out. and sanded all the inside edges and then the outside edges of all the pieces smooth on my oscillating spindle sander. The first order of business for me is to laminate a few pieces of wood together that are going to hold the router, which is the power source, together. I am going to be using a cordless rigid router, which is pretty cool because this is a truly cordless portable mortiser where a lot of other situations you actually still have to have a cord, which is not a big deal, but this is just a cool little option. As I said in the beginning, these are not my plans, but this little section right here is probably the coolest part of the entire build. Right now I am cutting some angle of aluminum to cover the edges of this V groove in this piece of plywood. And what this does is protect the edge of that plywood from a bolt banging against it and that bolt is what limits the actuation of the router to make bigger or smaller mortise grooves. And these sections of angle aluminum are simply held in place with a few screws. The handle of the mortiser is made out of a few pieces of laminated plywood. When gluing up anything in this build, you need to make very sure that everything is as square as you can possibly get it. This will affect your end results significantly. After allowing the glue to set up, I added a few screws to make sure everything is secured together very well, and then I needed to add a long bolt through the entire assembly to be able to cinch the router in place. I drilled this long through hole using the drill press, although it was deep enough that I needed to flip the piece over to be able to go all the way through, so what I did was with the bit off, plunged it all the way down into the hole, and marked a line where that placement was so that I could drill through the top and get my holes perfectly aligned. The handle of the tool is simply glued in place with a few reinforcement pieces on the sides. The pivot points of the fence of the mortiser angles along these nylon bushing, and since I was not able to find the exact sizes I needed, I needed to open up the inside diameter of the nylon bushing, and the only way I could hold it steady enough was to chuck it up in another drill while drilling through the opening. Now 
The frame of the mortise machine is assembled using wood glue and a few 23 gauge pin nails. Again, make sure you keep everything as square as you possibly can as you are assembling. After having built one of these already, I would say you want to wait to install the front and back sections until after you mount the pivot and sliding points of the router itself. These end up getting in the way and make it a little bit more difficult to install the base plate and the pivot point. And here I am using that nylon bushing that I opened up before, inserting it into the pivot point and then mounting them on the frame itself. making sure that all the pivot points of the frame are perfectly aligned with each other before gluing and then adding a couple of screws to the horizontal plate to make sure everything stays exactly where it belongs. Referring back to the most ingenious part of these plans, that V-groove that allows the pivoting motion of the router itself, right now you need to make a threaded insert and then a unique shaped washer that threads through a part of your portable mortise plate into this V-groove. You need to hammer down the top of it so it doesn't thread all the way through, make this goofy looking washer that slides in that inset groove in your plate, and this is what you adjust back and forth to change the width of your mortise cuts. What are you doing? This. You're sanding it? Yeah. You're doing a good job. Keep up the good work. Adding a few short drawer slides to the router plate itself. These short drawer slides are available at Rockler Woodworking and Hardware. They're, they're the only place I was able to find something so short. And there are four slides total, two underneath and two on the sides. So when putting the drawer slides into the frame itself, you need to be very careful with your alignment so that you can get to the screw locations in the drawer slides. The back should be fine as long as you have it with the back on, but the front's going to be a little bit tricky because I already have this glued in place. I'm going to cut the top of this off. This tab right here from here up, what's left will be bent over the top of this, and then I will bend this at 90 degrees, and that'll provide a stop for the forward movement. So a couple cuts and a couple bends. and now adding the 3D printed dust collection. This was so cool that it actually worked out the first time. I laid it on there backwards, used a square to transfer the lines all the way across so that I didn't have to second guess anything. This was marked out exactly where it needed to be and it fit perfectly. Right now I'm just using my eye and a piece of stock that I'm going to use for the mortises to set the width of the mortise cut. Adjusting that set point on the bottom, making sure I have it again, and going from there. At some point you see that slot on the bottom left side. I will have some markers on the pivot point that I can adjust without having to do it by eye. 
As many of you probably guessed, the use of this tool is fairly simple. The plunge is done with the drawer slides and the pivot is done side to side by hand and this creates the groove for your mortise joint. And I was actually super surprised at how well the machine actually worked. It can be a little bit better. I think part of it might be my technique of actually running the tool. I think I need to take a shallower cut a little bit slower to prevent any jumping of the router. But overall, it works great. This would definitely be something that you could use on a tabletop just as is. Well, there you go, guys. I am super excited to have this done. I got a lot of projects where I will be able to use this thing, but I do think I will spend a little bit more time tuning it up. I actually have a couple ideas of how to possibly improve this, but we'll see if I can ever get to those upgrades. I do got to say, right out of the box, it works out very, very well, and I could live with that making a tabletop. A little bit of sanding, and it will look awesome. Definitely make sure you head over to that website to check out the plans, and head over to Wes's channel, to Geeksmithing, to check out some different 3D printed projects. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hammer that thumbs up button. Please hit that subscribe button right over there so you never miss when I upload a new video. I'm DIY Tyler. You guys have a good one.